Isn't it great that we finally reached a point where the Leafs can win at home and we don't talk about the salute thing? Now we can get back to discussions that matter! Exactly. Like the Kessel for second end trade. Woo! Oh, in my car. Are you just gonna get hammered? Get me a toaster! Magic Angel Robot from Winnipeg! What the hell are you talking about? This team is ruining my life! over the Dallas Stars. Now we can talk about how dominating of a win that was for the Leafs, or we can be honest because pfft, wow. See, this is why I want the Leafs and I want the Stars as well to make the playoffs. They're fun and unpredictable. Fun predictable. Sometimes being fun predictable is not so fun predictable, and sometimes you get two points. But the Leafs play the Dallas Stars again on December 23rd. Mark that on your calendar. It's going to be a wicked game because you know the Stars want this one back, and I think the Leafs kind of do too. It's a little bit like last year. Game one of two, what happens? The Stars outshoot the Leafs something ridiculous like 50 to 23. Leafs win 3 2 in overtime. Trevor Smith is the hero. Next game, Dallas. Kills them. 7-1. I wasn't going to bring up the score, but it was 7-1. Jamie Benn had four points and Tyler Sagan decided to be merciful and only had two. This game, definitely different from the first one last year. Because instead of one team being terrible defensively, it was both. Dallas Stars fans watching, I am so sorry. Before the season, I was like, look out for the Dallas Stars. They got Sagan, they got Ben. Look out for the choo-choo train, Valerie Nachushkin. They got Spezza coming, Hemsky coming, Kari Ledden is so underrated. Oh my god, are the Stars going to be so great. They Stink. I think I'm just being more harsh on them because I said they'd be good and they're not. But first minute of the game, pretty much the whole first period, I'm watching and I'm going, oh my god, the Dallas Stars are a better Edmonton Oilers. You watch them in the offensive zone and you're like, how aren't they better? In the defensive zone, they handle the puck like they just made a serious mistake. Woo! A chocolate! That's not chocolate. Add a little bit of Leafs puck luck, you gotta admit the puck won't stop going in for the Leafs and they win. First goal! You know, I used to call the Leafs top line Phil Kessel and his band of merry men. With the way Tylee Bozeman, Bozes, Bose Lightyear is playing, there was only one name for that line. Star command. At first glance, that shot was just, ugh, how did Kari Lettinen let that in? But if you watch it again, Bozak actually has a clear shot on goal, and he waits until he's blocked by JVR. Makes it a little harder for Kari Lettinen, and Bozak stays hot as a pistol, and it's 1-0 Toronto. And here's proof that I don't script these, and I'm also too lazy to edit this out. I'm looking down, and they're now saying it was James Van Riemsdyk's 10th goal. Huh. Well, I would've used the gloves anyway, they're cool. So this is a team that can't stop scoring. Every leap, just click, click, click. One of the biggest guys slumping, one of the biggest slumpers, if you will, Nazem Kadri. Oh, does this guy need a goal? Ping! There it is. Nifty dream and scores, hopefully a sign of more to come. 2-0 Leafs. And there was more to come because Kadri got the secondary assist on Phil Kessel's power play goal to make it 3-0. There's another guy breaking out of a slump and here's how good the Leafs have been. Phil Kessel hasn't been scoring and I didn't notice. On the broadcast they're like, Phil Kessel hasn't scored in five games and I'm like, yeah? And then right around now is when the game really turned into a fire drill. Jason Spezza with a continent of space puts Dallas on the board. It's a bit of a, a bit of a shot. But then there's King Joffrey on the doorstep. Not a pretty goal but he's king so I got preggers anyway. I, I was knocketh up. And here's what it really came down down to, and here's who I think the real hero of the game was. Was it Kadri breaking out and having a three-point game? What was it Mike Santorelli with a nice little three-point game of his own? He's really growing on me. Joffrey Lupel with two goals. Phaneuf and Franzen got two assists each. How about that little pairing? I liked him offensively. He allowed three goals, which typically isn't great, but Jonathan Bernier had a wicked game. Because I was trying to keep count of who had more Point blank, can't miss, gimme chances. I think it was about 10 to 10. The Leafs scored on half of theirs, the Stars did not, and the Leafs won the game. I mean, that last little barrage at the end of the game was insane, but a few times in the first period, holy smokes, Leafs come out of that frame up 2-0. It could have easily, easily been 2-2. And like, I find the principle of timely saves to be confusing and weird, because timely saves means there's a more ideal time to save the puck. I find the best time to stop the puck is from the beginning of the game onward. And over the past few games, which yes, the Leafs have won, and therefore Bernier has won, he's let in some stinkers though. And he's been killed for letting in goals in the first minute, and rightfully so, you shouldn't be doing that. But when the Leafs get their own first period leads, you go into the intermission all fat and happy, look at us, we have the lead. He has really bailed the team out a few times. Tonight was a great example. So Dallas Stars fans, I've said some negative things about your team, but don't fret. Your team's gonna be good. I said it'd be this year. I'm um, okay, I was wrong. But you look at how many outlet passes they had. The shot Jason Spezza has. If Alish Hemsky can turn it on. You forget Nachushkin's not even in the lineup. Second's only getting better. Ben is about as good as he's going to be. And with all this finesse and beauty and scoring, we forget that part of Dallas's charm from last season 
reason, they're mean! There was that ridiculous Roussel hit on Kessel, which uh, defied physics to me. Okay, Roussel hit Kessel, alright, it was a decent check, but what in Kessel's feet made him fly that far? It didn't look like he was hit that hard. NHL, check Kessel's skates. I think he's he's got something in him, some rocket stuff. All the writers are like, see, I told you he's fat, he's cheating. And worth mentioning for Stars and Leafs fans, that hip check on Daniel Winnick. Not so much for the hit, but for the murderous look in Winnick's eyes. I don't know how much I can tell you about the X's and O's, but I've been looking into Daniel Winnick's eyes for a few games now, and there is nothing but blind, raging hate. So I don't know when it's gonna happen, but Daniel Winnick is definitely gonna ragdoll someone like MacArthur did to Chad LaRose a few years ago. Oh, I didn't think he was much of a fighter! I once heard comedian Jay Moore say something in an interview, you can't teach rage. One last thing. I haven't really mentioned Pat Quinn, and I definitely haven't mentioned John Beliveau because that's brand new. I know most of the people who watch are probably about my age, maybe a little younger, maybe a little older. Go back and look these guys up. When people talk about how great players or how great coaches coaches were, never take their word for it. Always look for yourself. I saw a great stat from NHL History Girl on Twitter today. People talk about the Montreal Canadiens being the reason that power plays end after one goal. Well, yeah, specifically Jean Beliveau. Because one time, someone on the other team got a penalty and he scored a hat trick on the same penalty in 44 seconds. He literally changed the game. And even better than his impact on the ice is what he did off of it. He just sounded like an amazing human being. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends and do your research. All you kids out there, you stay in school with your Wikipedia